In this video, I'm going to cover everything you need to know before you create your first door family in Revit. This is going to be a video outline and we're going to be going through everything step by step so you know everything that you should take into consideration before you create your first door family. Let's go. Firstly, let me tell you about the easiest way to create door and window families in Revit, and that brings us to today's video sponsor, Galan Planner Software. This is a free software that you can use to generate any door or window family in Revit that you can imagine. And yes, I said generate, not model. This means that your door or window families will be created automatically without you having to go in and model them yourself. The families are high quality, detailed and parametric and you can create them simply by sketching out the general shape, then we set the dimensions, assign proper profiles and panels and we even get this cool animated 3D preview. It will automatically generate all specifications for all doors and windows used in the project, completing all of the project documentation and streamlining the process of ordering the exact products for the families that you have generated. I actually have a full dedicated tutorial on this Revit plugin and I'm going to include the link to it up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. And if you want to try it out for yourself, as I said, it's completely free and the link to it will be again in the cards above and then also in the description of this video. And now let's talk about everything you need to know about door families in Revit. The first thing that you want to consider is how you create the actual opening in the wall. We have the opening tool that's included in Revit and this is going to create a simple perpendicular cut on the wall. In most cases this is going to be enough, however in certain cases if you need a more complex opening, perhaps let's say it has a notch or it's tapered for some reason or whatever else you need it to do, well in that case you would have to use a void to create that opening. Now let's cover the common question of should the doors in Revit have an opening parameter where you can actually adjust how much the door is open or closed. Well, in some cases, this can be really useful, especially for client presentations, for renderings where you want to uh, show the doors being opened up. So for any type of presentation, it's really good. Uh, for example, these 3D action doors that are available on balkanarchitect.com, I'm going to link to those up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. Well, they open and I think it's important for these types of families to open just because uh, they are a very specific type of a family and it makes sense to show in the model how they actually open and the functioning of that door, especially because it can inform the rest of the design. So makes sense to have that functionality. In other cases where you need a door just for creating regular project documentation, it doesn't really make sense to go and spend the extra time to make that door openable. So if it doesn't need to open, well, don't waste your time, just create a regular closed door and that's it. Then we have the flip arrows. So these are those little blue arrows that you can use to flip the door left to right in and out. Well, for those in the family editor, you can simply add them, either add one or two, depending on which, which functionality you want to have. I think it makes sense to have the door flip both in and out and left and right. Then we have the important topic of nesting families. So nested families are basically families within families. On a door example, that would mean that the door can be modeled all as regular geometry, so creating everything as forms. Or, for example, for the handle, you can create that as a separate family and then nest that family inside of the main door family. So those are basically the two approaches. So then we come to the question of when you should actually nest the families. And this is really up to you, up to the level of customization that you need and how you're creating your door families. In certain situations, it makes sense to have those nested families, for example, uh, especially for the accessories like the doorknobs and handles. It makes sense to have those as separate families because then they can be reused on other door families that you create in the future. 
but you should also keep in mind that you can actually nest the door frames and even door panels into your families, so that's a possibility as well. Then we come to the topic of drafting versus modeling. So is everything going to be modeled as geometry or are some things just going to be drafted or drawn with detail lines? So this is same as with doors that open. So should you do this? Well, it really depends on the level of presentation that you need. So if you want to create some uh, cool renderings or something like that, some presentations, well, in that case, it does make sense to model more. Uh, but in situations where the presentation part isn't really a priority, doesn't really make sense to waste time doing that. Just create basic geometry for uh, the actual modeling part, and then the rest can be done with just simple drafting for documentation purposes. Then we have the topic of subcategories, and for this, let's jump into Revit. And here we are in Revit, and as you can see, we have a door here, this is in the project, and this is that same family opened up in the uh, family editor. So if I select any geometry, like this panel, in the properties panel, we can see that we have the subcategory parameter, and it's just a drop menu where we can pick out well, the subcategory. Now this is a prefixed uh, set of options that we can assign here, and we can do the, this for pretty much any uh, piece of geometry or any line work that we create inside of this family. Now, why is this important? Well, back in the project, uh, we can see that if we go to the view where the door is placed, if we open up the visibility graphics overrides for that view and then search for doors, expand that, and here you can see that under the doors category, we have all of those same subcategories. If we find, for example, plan swing, and then I want to override that, let's make it magenta, for example, click OK, apply OK. Here in the project, you can see that this is now magenta. So you can basically assign these uh, subcategories or assign different uh, align styles or different colors and so on to these subcategories. So it makes sense to adjust those subcategories correctly here when we're building that family. Then we have the visibility settings. So this basically means that you can control a visibility of elements. You select the element, go to visibility settings, and here you can define if this is going to be shown only in a cut view. So when let's say a floor plan or a section is cutting through that door family, or you can also set up the detail level. So in which detail levels uh, is this uh, particular element going to be shown in the model. So you can customize all of that here. And finally, we have the families, types, and instance parameters. So once we have actually created the family, we need to define how it will actually appear in the project when we go to the door tool and open up the uh, properties panel drop menu. How is this family going to appear here? This is really up to you uh, how you would like to structure your families. So the first level will be the family level, then we have the second level, which is the type, and finally we have the instance parameters. So what I like to do is I like to follow the same approach as it would be if I was ordering a door from a manufacturer. So first I would define the uh, door type, the model, the, the, the color or material. So that would be my first thing. So the door style would be the, the first level, so that would be the family. So my family would be, let's say, a wood door, and then I would have another family, a PVC door, and then I would have a third family, an aluminum door. Then the next level, uh, let's go back to the uh, analogy of ordering a door from a manufacturer, then I would define, well, what are the dimensions of the door that fit my project. So then I would say, okay, uh, I need this dimension, and then the manufacturer would tell me which dimensions they have for each of the doors. So that would be the next level, in this case, for the type. And then finally, for instance parameters, it's just those kind of on-off parameters where you can uh, add additional optionality. So uh, that would be, for example, just to talk to the manufacturers, see what type of door handles they offer, what type of hinges, so on and so forth. So in Revit, I would leave that up to an instance parameter, which you can check on and off. 
And that's pretty much everything you need to know before you get started creating your first Revit family. So I hope you have learned something new and please tell me in the comment section below, is there something else that you like to keep in mind before creating your Revit door families or is there something else that you like to include in the families or just some additional settings? I would love to learn more about your workflow. And of course, if you're serious about mastering Revit, go to BalkanArctic.com. I'm going to link it up in the cards above and then also down in the description of this video. There you can find over 140 hours of Revit courses covering all of the interesting and complex topics inside of Revit. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.